Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Wrapping up day two of Munich High End 2023. Just came back from a phenomenal dinner. Thanks to MVL putting on a huge group. I mean, they invited so many people. We, I was at a great table. I had Edgar, David Chesky, Andrew Quint with Absolute Sound, Greg Barron with United Home Audio, John Gish from uh, New Orleans. He got a, probably the biggest audio file in all of New Orleans and g amazing gear. Uh, a dealer of the Bach. Uh, and MBLs and from Sweden, just a phenomenal group. It was a entertaining meal just from the crowd at our table. Then the music that was playing, live music. These were A plus musicians, like super high level, some of the best. Uh, truly got a standing ovation from the crowd at the end of the night. Just a phenomenal meal too. Great food. So. Thanks again to MBL. That was something super memorable, uh, and um, glad I was invited. So, uh, again, thanks, Jeremy, and all the guys at MBL. That was also one of my favorite rooms yesterday. But, boy, yesterday was, uh, for the most part, other than MBL and a few others, kind of disappointing on the sound side. Um, and I noticed that now that I have the Bach, when I go to these shows, it takes me a little while to temper what I'm used to, getting the spatial cues, the speakers disappearing, stuff like that. I have to kind of temper the fact that that Bach is not in play anymore with these um, systems. Um, so today I was a little more prepared, but also the rooms I visited today were super good about creating rooms within a room with treatments. I mean, going all out on room treatments. And two rooms that stood out early, early in the morning were Karma and Magico. Phenomenal job of transforming what is a bad space to put speakers, normally speaking, and sound quality has suffered in those that really haven't done anything, and creating enjoyable sound that I really did want to still listen to. Even without Bach, uh, these were creating the sound that I consider a benchmark for those cost no object systems and stuff that was very rewarding. So kudos. Obviously, the Magic OS 3 and the gear, the Pilium, and all the electronics are important. But really, the takeaway from that room was how well a job they did with building out a room within a room. Same thing with Karma. Cool speaker, well done, good electronics. But the takeaway to really pay attention to is how they transformed that. Even the floors they added to to create that environment, going that extra level to create what, if you're going to create a cost no object speaker, speaker, then doing all that it takes to create a cost no object result. So kudos to them. And also speaking of the Bach real quick from yesterday, I didn't feature anything today on the Bach, but I forgot yesterday to mention the Mark II of the audio and Dio is now released. This is the Munich was supposed to be the release of this. So audio and Dio, unfortunately, the bad news is the price is going up, demand is up, but also this, this is much bigger processor to make it future proof even past five years or so and some of the things coming down the pipe. Uh, but the good news is there is that discount code. Contact me as long as you contact me before Monday um, and I can get you at least in the hopper. Um, that discount code should offset the increase in prices. No other shows planned with Theoretic Up Live Physics and Bach for the rest of the year. None of those June shows for sure. So don't anticipate any more discount codes this year at least. Um, so if you want to do that, there's also maybe available one demo by the time I get back. I'm not even sure uh, that I can give you at the old price plus the discount code maybe a good option there for those of you interested in the Bach. Now, what I wanted to do was go through some highlights today, but to be honest with you, <laughs> I don't want to brag, but I think this day Every single one of my videos is worth watching. I mean, I want to watch them, you know, uh, again, because it was so fun uh, with all the rooms today, certain things picking out. It's not, again, about the sound quality. It may have been something innovative I haven't seen before, an open baffle with it, open baffle wing this way. Uh, There's a pen audio, I think is the name of the company. Very intriguing. Just every room, audio neck, the first time I've seen, well, I've seen audio neck before at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, but this was the first time I got to listen with uh, 
almost dedicated room at the time. And I got to see him build his own servers. And he thinks like I do with building a server. Not these little tiny boxes with everything crammed in, no video capabilities. Uh, he was doing a prototype where he is going to eventually put it into a box. But watch that video. Again, I don't want to go through every single uh, video I did today, but I think you'll enjoy it. And I've got these in a playlist. So if you just look at the Munich 2023 playlist, if you follow, it should give you an order. Um, anything that you missed, and if you want to see them all at one time, binge watch me, guys. <laughs> I think you'll enjoy it. Trust me. But let me point out a few things that were super highlights. I wrote them down here, so let me review. Well, I don't even have to re review this, though. The Wilson Banesh press event that I went to got the first seat, the prime seat over everybody, including Fremer, all these guys who got the front seat, me. And with good reason, because I was anticipating this. This is the first time they've created a turntable uh, in many years. And the amount of R&D, if you watch that 40 minute presentation, I think anybody would be impressed by the amount of R&D that went into it. Yes, it's a pricey turntable, but when you look at how much science and engineering and trial and error R&D and technology that's in this totally re-engineering the motor structure, everything, the tone arm, things that nobody else can do, nobody else has done before. Um, and the results showed when they played. I was so, somebody even made a comment, was it serendipitous that they played St. James Infirmary? If you're a longtime subscriber or at least watch my last show reports, you remember that St. James Infirmary is the one track that I will acknowledge is on vinyl much better than anything on digital. Uh, and it just works so well. Even with ticks and pops that you'll hear in that room, I can overlook it because the vinyl sounds so good in so many systems I've heard. And I use that as my benchmark to test vinyl rigs just because I know it so well. Well, let me tell you something. Yes, the entire Wilson Banesh system is good. Uh, the electronics, the speakers, phenomenal. Definitely Wilson Banesh. If you're considering Magicos, Wilsons, Rockports, uh, YG, whatever, you need to throw Wilson Banesh in that mix. Um, that's a high-end speaker. They do all their drivers. I hope to visit their facility one day because this is a company doing very high-end research and development, truly not just charging a high-end price because they can and want people that want bragging rights to buy their stuff. They are actually, as you heard today with their turntable, putting a tremendous amount of effort into advancing the hobby. Again, no speaker's perfect, nothing's for everybody, but check that out. But when I heard St. James Infirmary on that entire system, including that new turntable, even among the best systems I've ever heard before, I was hearing stuff new or things better today than I haven't heard before. It doesn't mean the entire presentation or entire song was better. Certainly everything in the room was well treated and they, they did this, they were like Karma and Magico creating a room within a room. So they did the best they could, probably could get even better performance uh, in a fully dedicated room, but let me tell you, when I hear stuff with that song I've never heard before and it sounded so real in certain respects uh, and multiple times I was saying this is better than I've ever heard before in certain areas. Uh, that's telling to me because that's, again, a song I use a lot. So kudos to Wilson Banaj. Great uh, event. 40 minutes to an hour in there was well worth it. Um, another one that's always well worth it is Ari Surratt because that's another company brilliant and advancing the hobby. And so if you haven't seen my videos before or my interviews with Stavros, uh, the world's most hardcore audiophile who has or Ari Serrat Auroras, you're going to want to watch those videos today because I have Stavros kind of short form in five minutes walk through that Aurora speaker. People look at it as wacky, gimmicky, whatever. No, everything on there is done for a reason, a purpose. Even the, the, the shape of the horn. And let me tell you, that's the best horn I've ever heard speaker for sure and could be one of the best speakers again if I have cost no object budget that's one in the consideration so yeah definitely watch that and uh, may go to dinner with uh, Stavros tomorrow night and have a chance to ask him more questions so if you do have any questions post it in either of the videos that I posted or in this video and I'll try to uh, get him the answer another one that was uh, a nice revelation today was YG because they have active speakers that I wasn't aware of. And so, and price points for giving you everything included did not, you know, make me go, 
ridiculous, you know, considering passive ones sell for the same prices that they were quoting me for their active ones. And of course, YG is featured in among some of the best systems and home visits I've ever done. So they're one of the top. If you've got cost no object budget, you want to look at YG. But now that they're doing active and DSP, again, who called this trend in the hobby? Who's saying DSP is the way? <laughs> and these companies eventually would figure that out. Well, let me tell you something. The companies that are doing DSP, especially like the Meridian I said yesterday, they have a huge advantage because they can't fix everything in these rooms, but they can fix a lot and make give them a huge advantage over others that can't do a thing. So kudos to them. Uh, another speaker in my favorites of cost no object for certain reasons, I'll see box. And what was impressive there is they had no room treatments, but still I was like, I factored in what I was hearing. Anything I didn't like per se, I knew it was because of the room. But what I heard in terms of the presentation, line source, floor to ceiling, it's so refreshing not to have everything in the room, music wise, be the two thirds and down, or even half the room and down, like you get with a lot of point source box speakers. And you feel like you're listening to midgets playing in front of you. When you get in from the Alsi box, and again, the Clarisis has a lot of potential there too. I just gotta go back and hear some better music on it uh, but that I think they have the same potential as Alcivox uh, but Alcivox today resonated with me when I factored in the fact they had no room treatments that's the kind of presentation open baffle single line source single type of driver for most of the frequency range that I love and I was like so happy in there I just remember saying this is close to what I get at home the type of sound I like so kudos to Alcivox um, another highlight today was for the first time ever seeing OMA, Oswald Mills Audio. I've seen their speaker one time, but it was a small model. It didn't even have the matching subwoofer, so it wasn't really fair for me to, I had to call it like I heard it. It didn't impress me at all. I had to say that, but I haven't heard there further up the line. And this was my first time seeing them a show. They did a tremendous job with their room, big, big room, but they set it up almost as like a speakeasy uh, cabaret type thing where they had end tables and chairs you know situated as if you're sitting in groups listening to the presentation everything was done up uh in an aesthetic vibe that you felt like you were transported to another venue instead of a hotel room or a conference area and so that was super cool it, the only thing is it was so crowded once they started playing music and people moving around i was getting bumped into and stuff it just didn't sit with me to stay there long but I, I saw enough to give them a thumbs up and if I have time I'll definitely go back to be, evaluate the sound quality but again they were um, debuting a new turntable which is not really something I'm in the market for and especially at the price points that they charge but today the theme was giving my vinyl fans something to uh, look at because I also another one I showed was that seven hundred thousand dollar turntable without the arm Make sure you watch that video. Again, every video has something cool in it today. Uh, but I did go to Cabas again, and I'm just telling you that Rialto is unbelievable, especially in its extension of the bass. The treble can be a little crispy um, if you're used to a different level of uh, refinement, silk tone tweeters and stuff like that. Certain types of presentations and upper end, maybe not to your taste, but at $3,000, and 30 hertz and everything you get. After I left that room, I was like, I'd rather go sit back in that room than probably 90% of the other rooms I've visited for just listening to music and enjoyment purposes. Kabas is doing things right. $3,000 for everything, guys, not just the speaker, the Rialto killer. And as you saw in my video before I came out here, um, Pete the Greek ordered the Pearl, which is basically the Rialto, same driver complement if you heard, but a different type of um, cabinet and design and chassis. So unbelievable. Over a thousand watts of power in that little thing. So it can make give you ear damage. Um, another one that I was looking forward to meet again was Via Blue. I've done some videos even recently on vibration control and how they provide that German engineering and aesthetic vibe that's a part of every buying decision. People want something aesthetically cool. Even if they can't hear the difference or it's not a huge delta of difference, obviously they want something that has a 
technical merits, and that's where I tried to show with the Via Blue, at least in my case, had some te technical merits and benefits that I was happy with. But also, even if you're just buying it for aesthetics or to prevent any issues that you're not aware of and be on the safe side, that's a company I'm very happy to um, you know, recommend their new cable lifters. I'm not a cable lifter guy for big sound quality differences, but for cable organization, I know in my case, sometimes when my power cords have to run next to interconnects uh, on the floor, that's not a situation you don't want. Any cables running parallel like that to power cables. So if you can't perpendicular or move them around in other ways, elevation is a way. And that was a very impressive cable elevator in terms of how far it got you off the ground, how it could hold big cables and keep them firm and anti-sliding and leaning from the bottom. And the fact that they came out with a cheaper model, which is basically their vibration control pods, but they just put a cable elevator uh, canal on it to hold it. So kudos to Avaya Blue for offering German engineering, aesthetics, performance at reasonable cost within the standpoint of you know you're having to pay for a little bit for audiophile and cool looking uh, gear. So again, thumbs up to Via Blue. Great seeing those guys again. Um, another one, uh, I think I talked about Audio Neck, uh, Karma, Magico. Yeah, I think I covered as much as I can today, but if I think about today, every video, again, is worth watching. So hopefully you check it out. I think tomorrow is going to be a fun day as well. I might spend a little bit more time showing you guys the rest of the town. I did have a video today where I went to the Motor World across the street. That was fun looking at cars like Bugattis, uh, McLarens, more under that roof than I've ever seen. Uh, this is a fun town, a cool town. I want to give you a vibe of what it's like to be at Munich in case you want to see it for more than just show. Uh, so maybe I'll do that a little bit tomorrow with Robert and some of the guys that you've been seeing me with the most hardcore audiophile. So uh, sign up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you back here soon tomorrow.